In Blender, we know that we can create multiple copies of an object, using the array modifier. But such objects remain connected as one single object, you cannot edit them, or modify them, separately. In this tutorial, we will learn how to create separate copies of an object in huge numbers, say hundreds or thousands of them. And how to keep them as separate individual objects. Let us start with a new composition. We will make several copies of this cube, we will use the array modifier, but little differently. So go to the modifiers tab, and add an array modifier. Then change the count to 10. And change the x factor to 2. So, as a result, we got 10 duplicate copies of this cube. We will now replicate this set, again in this direction, which is the y direction. So, apply this modifier, and then add another array modifier. Change the count value to 15. And this time, instead of x, change the y factor to 2. So we get a set of 150 objects here. Let us also apply this modifier. Now, all these duplicate objects are connected as one single object. But we don't need that, we want to have 150 individual objects which we can move or rotate individually. So, we need to cut these into individual objects. To do that, go to the edit mode. And while everything is selected, go to the mesh menu. Then under the separate sub-menu, select this option to separate by loose parts. Blender will cut each of these objects into individual cubes. In the object outliner, you can see that all these cubes are listed as individual objects. Now you can edit any one of them or animate them, as you wish, just like separate objects. But our job is not yet complete. The first thing you will notice is, the origin points for all these objects are lying at the center of this first cube. But, to be able to edit or animate each cube individually, we need to have the origin point for each of these objects at their individual centers. In order to do that, first select all the objects. If they are not already selected, you can draw a selection box to select them together. Then go to the object menu, and under set origin, select the option called origin to geometry. You can see that the origin points for these objects have moved back to their individual centers. Now, although we can edit these objects or animate them individually, as separate objects, it might be a difficult task to modify them one by one, and it may not be practical either. So, we want these objects to be somehow connected, so that if you apply some changes to one of them, all others are also affected by that change. The good thing is that, they all share the same material, so if you select any one object, and in the Materials tab, change the color of its material, it will take effect for all the objects as well. But that may not be the case for some other type of changes. For example, let us try to add some bevel to any one particular cube. So select any one cube, and go to the Modifiers tab. Then add the bevel modifier. Let us change the bevel amount to 0.25, and the number of segments to 5. Now you can see a nice bevel effect is applied to this cube, but the same is not visible on any other cube, because they are altogether separate objects. However, if you want, you can copy this bevel effect to all other objects also. For that, first select all these objects together. Then under the object menu, you have an option called make links, and under this, you have multiple options, you can select what type of changes to be copied to all other selected objects. Since we want to apply the bevel modifier, please select the modifiers option here. So you can see that the same bevel modifier is now applied to all other cubes as well. This is very helpful, because you can modify just one object, and the same change will be applied to all other objects that you have selected. And under this make links, you have many other options, like animation data, that will help you to copy the animation data from one object to the others, or you can duplicate the materials, you can duplicate the font style in case you have text objects. So this way, you can link the objects together, and modify them in one go. Now, let us look at another use case. Let us say, you want to rotate all of these cubes, to one particular direction. So just like before, first select the objects together. Now to rotate them, let us select the Rotate tool. If you now use the gizmo to rotate them, you will see that they are rotating together as a set, like a single object. But we want to rotate them, by a fixed amount, around their individual origin. To do that, expand this little drop-down, and select the option called Individual Origins. 
Now, if you rotate them using this gizmo, you will see that they are rotating as individual objects, just like what we actually wanted. And, let us say, we want the change to impact these objects, not equally, but at random. When we modify one object, the other objects should take some random effects. For that type of requirements, we have to use this feature called proportional editing. You can enable it by clicking on this circle button. In the previous tutorial, we have seen the use of this proportional editing in the edit mode. You can also use this nice tool in the object mode. Now, if you modify any object, it will propagate to all other objects in its neighborhood. We want to have this change propagate to other objects at random amount. So, in this little drop-down, select the random option. Let us try with the move tool by moving some object along the z-axis. As you start moving it up, since we have turned on proportional editing, a circle called influence circle appears. You can change the radius of this circle by moving your mouse wheel while still pressing the left mouse button on the gizmo handle. Make it large enough to cover all the objects. So moving one of them will cause other objects to also move in the same direction, but the amount of movement is random for each object. This way, you can move some objects and arrange the entire set with completely random distribution. Proportional editing is a very helpful feature, and if you have not watched it yet, I suggest you to look at the full potential of this nice tool in my previous tutorial, the link is in the video description. So, today we have learned how to create a set of objects and keep them separate, how to duplicate the modifications of one object to the others, and how to place them randomly. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.